and people be blessed in your mighty name. Amen. go so announcement time love langford who's excited for love langford fantastic love langford is on this week it's on tuesday uh 5 to 6 30 p.m if we're always looking for volunteers right so if you want to be a volunteer wash some dishes collect some plates serve some food talk to some people come and see lisa out the front it's this thursday this tuesday it's a birthday too this Tuesday, so make sure you come on down. Mm. 5 to 6.30 p.m. of Love Langford. Name changes youth. Are you guys okay this morning? Good. The youth corner is still up and running. It's in that corner over there. Um, we're going to have some a youth corner after church. See Millie. Where's Millie? Millie's in kids are awesome. Millie's our youth leader. If... Um, you want to hang out with some youth after church, see Millie. Baptism service. Oh, yeah. It's in two weeks' time. It was supposed to be next week, but we had to change it due to, we have a conference, not our conference. There's another church having a conference next week, which they are using the church Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we, we're still here on Sunday morning, yes. Yeah, yeah. But because they're having a, um, a conference, church is going to be crazy and uh, we're going to have we're going to move our baptism service to the 28th of august okay see pc or lisa if you want to be baptized on the 28th it's going to be amazing um volunteer all right i've got to read this one uh with that being said we are looking for someone with a trailer who's got a trailer big trailer shane shane's got a big trailer thanks shane I spoke to Shane earlier this morning. We're looking for someone with a big trailer to move a whole, a whole pool. We're bringing a pool in here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. People know this. So we need a trailer for a little pool that we bring for the baptism service. Okay, awesome. We're going to have a guest speaker on the 21st of August. There he is, Pastor Dave Hooper. He actually looks like that too in real life. Uh, he's going to be speaking here, preaching the Word. It's going to be amazing. He was one of our overseers. He's an amazing guy. He's also an amazing artist. Last time he preached here, he preached and painted. It was amazing. Yeah? He's going to be doing the same thing. Fantastic. All right. Awesome. Also, I forgot to mention, when we have that baptism service, we're actually going to be having an amazing lunch here. So we're going to celebrate after service with a lunch. Come on, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Anyone else having a birthday this month? Pete, Anton, everyone's having a birthday. I saw yours on Facebook this morning. That's why I pointed it out. I saw you. Awesome. Should we sing happy birthday to them? Yeah, come on. Let's sing. Let's five, six, seven, eight. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everyone. Happy birthday to you. Well done. Awesome. That's the end of announcements. We're going to take two minutes to greet someone. Go hug someone who's having a birthday. And Pastor Clinton will be preaching the word.
sit down. <laughs> I haven't had this for a while. I'm going to make up for it. No. <laughs> Kidding, grab your seats. Grab your seats, everybody. Welcome online. And we now got our online viewers. Welcome. Very bright up here. All right. So just before Clint preaches, we just wanted to make mention it's going to be Lisa's birthday on Tuesday coming. Um, so come here. <laughs> it's not silly. So we just wanted to say happy birthday. Huh? Because it's your birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. We... <laughs> it would be a miss to not to mention it, but to say happy birthday. No, it's not okay. Um, appreciate everything that you are, who you are, what you do. And it's not about what you do, it's who you are. And we're thankful for that. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, Paula, I'll let you hand it straight over because it's very heavy. Happy birthday. Yeah, so coming up on Tuesday, it's her birthday. She will be here at Love Langford working on her birthday, but that's all good. <laughs> but yeah, happy birthday. Thanks. Thank you, babe. 44, excuse me. Mark chapter 4, I said. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome. Well, we're going to get into the Word today. I uh, hope you're ready. I'm really excited about this month. Normally we've been in Psalm 119, which has been awesome, about hearing about how God places an emphasis uh, on His Word in the middle of His Word. Huh? It's so cool, like God. The longest chapter is Psalm 119 in the Bible. It's right in the middle of the Bible. And the theme of the whole chapter is the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And so when God places, when God does that, and especially like in Hebrew teaching and that, what they do, they call it, it's a bit like what we would refer to as bookends or the sandwich, you know, the sandwich treatment. You, you, you butter them up on this one, you put the meat in the middle, and then you butter them up on that side, especially when you're having to bring some correction or whatever else. But God places, when he bookends something, when he says, or when he repeats something, what he is trying to get you to understand is not just what's repeated, but what's in the middle of what is being repeated. And when you get what's in the middle of what's repeated, that's what he's trying to get you to get. That's like those uh, Monte Carlo biscuits. The outsides are nice, but it's that jam cream thing in the middle. When you dunk it in coffee and then you eat it, something about it. Anyway, this is not a diet sermon. Uh, this is more about... But that's part of what Psalm 119 is. And so it's been really amazing. Hasn't Paul and Lisa and the team just been great? Uh, in speaking into that. It's been phenomenal. There's such a grace on when God's word comes out like that. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been getting a whole lot of stuff out of that about how to, to govern my life, how to put his word into my life. And so that's part of what this series is about this month. So a heart of worship. The worship that we're going to speak about is literally around the word of God. We're going to be doing the story about the sower and the seeds or the sower and the four soils. And it's really about looking at the condition of our heart. So turn to your neighbor and go, how's your heart? How's your heart? And then uh, a few weeks ago, we ordained Michael and Chrissy. And that was just phenomenal, yeah. And they're watching from over east, where they're going to be ministering in, uh, to a church. They're on break right now, but they'll be ministering to a church in Sydney, uh, talking about mission, etc. So Michael and Christy, I know you guys are watching. And Benji, God bless you, we love you. But the significance of that wasn't just about an ordination service. The significance of that church, I want you to know, and this is part of what this month is, is that it was a prophetic statement or an ordaining statement by God about the shift that we are already walking in as a church from where we were uh, to where God's taking us. And so that's going to be just quite an interesting journey for us right now because there's the, the church that we know and love, um, the church that we know and love, but then there's God adding to this church the people that he's going to cause to reach nations. So that's why our whole journey going Sunday morning is not so much 
uh, game day as it is, uh, halftime huddle, equip you to go do the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry is out every day doing whatever it is, as husband, wife, parent, uh, friend, whatever that looks like. God has given his spirit on you, his word in you, to be that person that brings the light of Jesus Christ and that you're salt. So wherever you go, things should taste better and be better. And wherever you go, things should look brighter. So especially in the world that we live in, that is such a great opportunity for us to be light in darkness. Come on, where there's no hope, people have got just darkness, no hope. You turn up in their world, you become that hope. And you become that word. You become that life. You become that truth. So we're not going to just hold it in here, have our little fix on the Sunday, go out, and no one knows there's anything different about us. God is equipping us and calling us. And he's called you to your home, to your business, to your school, to your uni, uh, to, where, to nations, to our community, to the state, to uh, remote areas, wherever that is. And so part of, we were just chatting uh, Michael said it'd be great for us to send a team at some point. Uh, and so that could be something that really God opens up, but I really feel like God is opening up more and more doors. And then the other thing I need to mention, so everyone is probably aware that we've moved to Mandra. And uh, why drive seven minutes when you can drive an hour and 15 minutes? <laughs> Move to Mandra, they say. <laughs> past Mandra. Okay, for some people who've got issues... <laughs> past Mandra, it's near Dawesville, um, but, and there were some people going, oh, Clint's out, he's moving out, he's gone, what's going on? Please do not in any way feel that we're leaving, moving, going, we are, God is expanding us, and that's part of his plan, but Langford forever will be, as in our heart, we'll always be connected, we're not, not, not leaving, okay, online, not leaving. Not leaving. All right. Tend to your neighbor and go, they're not leaving. So that could be like a, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Just don't express your ah. Uh. We'll just leave it. We'll... Uh, and then just say, again, thank you for Pastor Ben. So don't count this as my preaching time. This is the ad break. Have we got that video, Caroline? Uh, let me just say, after I talked about Pastor Bin, then you can show it. So Pastor Bin, uh, when Jesus uh, satisfies me, you spoke about that last week. I love that. And again, just want to thank him for being here. I know that he'll watch this at some point. Um, and he really just loved you guys. He loved the life of our church, just really embraced it. So he talks about when, we, when Jesus satisfies us, we embrace God's word. We endure hardship. We're eager to praise and we exist in community. And I don't know if you've realized, but there has been a shift in the atmosphere of our praise and in our worship. And in our Wednesday early morning prayer at 6 o'clock, which I leave Mandra at 5 o'clock. Oh, no, sorry. It is amazing. Thank you, Novi. But I'm just saying, if you're living closer than Mandra, it'd be great for you to come anyway, if you can. <laughs> See, that was like a big setup right at Bourj. Uh but not so much about coming to prayer, but what an atmosphere of the presence of God that you literally felt the presence of heaven and angels in this space and in this place. It's not about angels, it's about him. But when you're in that space with him, it's just incredible. So on a Wednesday morning, really love every fortnight. So not next Wednesday, the fortnight after. And Shelley is the person that you need to see about that. Why did I go into that ad break? I don't know why. Okay, Pastor Bin. Anyway. Let's show you the video. This will be about our series. Thank you. I don't know if that's the... Uh Get up, get up out of that grave. <laughs> Speak to that seed. Get up out of that grave, sucker. <laughs> can it work? I don't mind it with get up out of that grave in the background. But if we can't work, that'd be awesome. It's called embracing the awkward peeps. It's all good. Hi, online. Good to see you. I don't know if you can see me in the dark, but good to see you.
Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. So that's going to be our series. It's going to be amazing. Listen. Have you seen that little kid on the, on the socials? Linda, listen, Linda, listen, Linda. If you haven't, I have. Um, but God's, Jesus is so emphatic about this that you're, you're not just, because we can sort of listen to something and not really take notice of it. Uh, confession, at night I'll put my earpod in when I'm going to bed. It's really bad. And I'll listen to a sermon or whatever else. Um, usually uh, it's the Bible stuff, it's nothing else. And I'll fall asleep and then I'll wake up in the middle of the night and it's sort of paused Then I'll take it out and then put it out. But I'm, I'm listening to something but I'm not hearing it. If that makes sense? And I think we've come for it through a journey where we've gone, there's so much emphasis on the Word of God. You're the only person that can answer this. How has that changed your life? How has that changed you, your relationship with God? Because we can speak week after 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 week, and you're listening to something, but you're not hearing it. And the hearing is not just going, oh, I've got to read my word. It's actually doing that. It's actually then positioning yourself in the word of God. And the thing is, I know the struggle uh, because sometimes we'll position ourselves in the Word of God and we, it feels like we can't receive it. It feels like it doesn't make sense. It feels like I don't understand. It feels really difficult. On the other hand, it's not all bad. On the other hand, people go like, I just read a line and it really spoke to me. And so God is wanting to go, hang on a second. We can, uh, as, as we saw the, the story, we can throw out seed and every week, but if it lands on hard ground, it's not going to be penetrated. It's not going to penetrate. It's not going to form his kingdom in your life. So anyway, let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 4. That's where we're going to read from. The hard thing about not preaching for, I think, like eight weeks, it feels like I'm going to just like throw everything at you that I've been building up for eight weeks, but it hopefully we'll, I'm going to try and keep it simple. Uh, Mark, chapter 4, uh, verses 1. Once, uh, once again, Jesus went to teach the people on the shore of the Lake Galilee, a massive crowd surrounded him. I'm reading from the Passion, sorry, this part, this first part. A massive crowd surrounded him, and the crowd was so huge that he had to get into the boat and teach the people from there. He taught them many things by using parables and to illustrate spiritual truths, saying, Consider this, or listen to this. A farmer went out to sow seeds, and as he cast out the seeds, uh, the, some, of, some of it fell along the beaten path. Uh, just underline beaten path if you can, or turn to your neighbor and go beaten path. Just nudge them in the, in the ribs, beaten path. And soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto the gravel with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted uh, since the soil had no depth. And when the days grew hot, uh, when the days grew hot, sorry, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Okay, that's the second. The third, other th seeds fell amongst thorns so when the seed sprouted uh, so when the seed sprouted uh, d uh, so when the seed sprouted so did the thorns crowding out so I've underlined my Bible and I can't because I've underlined right through the word with a pen that's why uh, sprouted so uh, the thorns crowding out the young plants so that they could produce no grain but some seeds fell on good soil onto, onto the good rich soil and kept producing 
a good harvest. Some healed at 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as was planted. If you understand this, then you need to respond. And so the picture of, let me give you context. Jesus was just a little while in a house ministering to people. And he's ministering there, and they've all turned up because they have seen uh, people being fed. They have seen blind eyes open because not long before that, uh, Jesus is telling John's disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, go back to John and just tell him. People are being delivered. People are being set free. People are being healed. The dead is being raised. And you can understand why there's a crowd now gathered around Jesus wherever he goes. Because it's like, wow, this is like better than even Netflix. This is better than, you know, you go and watch the Eagles win today. This is going to be amazing. And so they gather because Jesus is there and he's speaking in a house. And then he moves from there to this place in Galilee near the ocean, which in that place was sort of like a, a harvest cove is where a lot of the sheep, uh, a lot of the farmland was on the, on the sort of the ocean bank. Um, the ocean and then a bit of an, a ridge and then that's where the, the land was. But you could see the beautiful ocean from, from that perspective. And so Jesus is at that point and he's using what's around him to actually describe what the kingdom of God is. And so we're going to be reading through this, but we just see the context of there's a crowd that's gathered around. And then he speaks in this parable about sowing seed. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm in a crowd because I've heard that he heals and I'm needing a healing, I'm not coming there to hear about seed. I want my healing. And if, I'm, and if this, this sort of situation, whatever it is that I'm going through, my leprosy that I need, I'm coming there because I want you to heal me. But now you're talking about seed and then that's it? Like there's no like show and tell, there's no manifestation, what's going on? You're just talking about seed and farming. Yeah, we're here, we understand, we know farming. In the context of that day, they understood what he was saying. But see, the thing that I love about Jesus, he was actually establishing what the kingdom of God looks like. For those Bible scholars, if you want to know, the parables that follow, this is probably the one that Jesus says, if you don't get this, you won't get any of them. And it's not just about the metaphor or the illustration about a heavenly uh, perspective on an earth, with an earthly story. It's much more than that. He's establishing literally the timeline of from Jesus being there to his second coming, if you read through it all. And so he's establishing the kingdom. He's letting them know the kingdom of God, is, this is how it's going to happen. First, it's going to start. One in, th- in four is going to get this. Not a real good start, Jesus. Wouldn't you just keep doing the miracles and then people will believe and then, you know, and then they'll come and they'll tell their friends and they're going to come and, 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 and Jesus goes, yeah, that's great, but I'm letting you know, only one out of four is going to actually get and receive the kingdom. They'll receive their healing. They'll receive the manifestation of it. It's like us at church. We're going to, we want to see that, but if that's all I get, then at the end of the day, that could be just drowned out by all these different conditions. And so you... He comes back to the main emphasis about the parable and the sower because he it says it's a parable, the, the, the parable of the sower and the seed. But it's not really, but it is. And some say it's about the sower, some say it's about the seed, some say it's about the ground. But the real emphasis that Jesus wants to bring about is about his word. The main person character in this story is about the word of God. His word. Hey, I want to tell you about the word of God because he's talking about himself, Jesus Christ. In the beginning, he was. That's who he was. Jesus was that word. I think we've got some of those scriptures. Let's go through it. I'm trying to keep to my scriptures today, so help me, Caroline. Just randomly put them up if you can. That would be awesome. Again, I'm I'm apologizing. I love listening to our other speakers. They were so succinct and they stuck to um, their words. John 1.1. 1, 1. Is that John 1.1? 1, 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, let's go to John 1.14. We're going to read it all together. Help me out. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His... Come on. Full of grace. And truth. And then John 6, 63. 
The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts. Listen to this. Okay. So when we talk about the Word of God, we're talking about literally Jesus Christ. Positioning yourself in Him. And the fact that He's saying, hey, listen, my Word is Spirit and it is life. Now, we know His Word from creation that formed. We know that by His Word, He keeps everything together. We know that His Word, when it goes out, it will, it will re- do everything that He's planned for His Word to do. His Word won't return void. That's the word I was looking for. His Word won't return void. It means it's going to accomplish something. So when He sends out His Word to you, He's actually sending and to, to I and to the church and to our community, He's actually sending out a Word that He wants to see it accomplished. And it will be accomplished. But then he goes into this story about his word being the priority and he's saying, hey, listen, I will sow out that seed. Uh, Because when you read further on, he says, this is what this means. When I sow that seed, it is the word of God. In fact, let's read it. I don't need to paraphrase it. I'm doing good today. I'm so impressed with myself. Sorry. (laughs) Just a moment. Because normally I'll give Caroline about 20 verses that we're going to be going through and I'll get through one. All right, we're going to take it up at, um, let's take it at 10. Afterwards, Jesus, his disciples, and those close to him remained behind to ask Jesus about his parables. Can I just say this real quickly? Your desperation determines your revelation. See, because you can hear me preach on a Sunday, but that's it. Maybe you'll open up your Bible, maybe you won't. Maybe, you, and for some of us, it's not all bad. Listen, please don't hear me. I'm just not saying it's all bad. There are some people that will know and will dig in the Word of God. But when you hear a word like this or a saying or a message that we've heard over the past eight weeks, is what is in you that goes, hang on a second, I'm, Jesus, what does this mean to me? Would you go after that message? Would you go after that parable? Would you go after that illustration? Or when he wakes you up at night and gives you something and maybe you roll over, but will you go or you'll write it down but then just forget about it? Or will you go to that point and go, hey, listen, Jesus, I need you. What does this mean to me? I want to encourage us to be those people that go back, that that get up and go, you know, I, I need to know. Clint's talking about this seed. Which ground am I? Which soil am I? And what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me about the thing that I'm facing? What are you saying to me about my purpose? What are you saying to me about the ministry that you placed on me? What are you saying to me about my business? What are you saying to me about my marriage? What are you saying to me, God, about my parenting? What are you saying to me about the work that I do? Whatever God has placed in your hands, He gives you a word for it. All right, you good? All right, let me, call let me just keep being impressed with myself. Verse 11, then He said to them, the privilege of intimately knowing, listen to this, the mystery of God or the secrets of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. Let me read that again. The privilege of intimately knowing the mysteries of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. Psalm 25 says, God says, I I speak to, I divulge my secrets to those who I love. So So he wants to tell you secrets. How good are you keeping secrets? Some people say, suggest that I leak like a sieve. Oh, don't say anything about it. And then I'll... <laughs> but on the other hand, but on the other hand, if there's something confidential that I'm speaking to someone about their personal world, that is vaulted. So just say, so you know. Um, but the thing that I love here about what God's Word is saying, the privilege of intimately knowing the mysteries of God has been given to you. I think we can probably just end there right now. Let's call the band up. I'm wanting to place an emphasis on the importance of how God sees his word in you. Come on. When last have you had like a little secret squirrels meeting with him? God, what's your secret? What's your secret about your kingdom in my life? I know I can pray, God, this has happened. God, I need you to do this. And God, I'm feeling like this. And God, I'm trying to, and God, I'm, and, I, and we'll tell him all of that. But the thing, the invitation of Jesus Christ is, can I, can I tell you some secrets? Come on, come in. And so they come in, and he says, uh, I'm going to tell you this stuff. It's been granted to you, but not to the others. Where everything is revealed in parables. For even when they see what I do, they do not understand. 
And when they hear what I say, they will learn nothing. Otherwise, they would repent and be forgiven. I don't know about you, but this is confusing for me initially when I read it. Jesus, we're hoping that we're gonna, you're going to throw seed on everyone and they're gonna, it's going to sprout in their life and they're going to become a Christian. Yeah, the word of God's going to go in and they're going to receive the kingdom of God and that's going to be great. And Jesus is going, that's the intention because if you look at the bigger picture of his kingdom coming, he says eventually it'll be like yeast in dough. It'll affect the whole dough. So if you look at the process and the progress of his kingdom, it's going to be infectious to everything. But right now when it starts... It's not affectious to everything. And he says, uh, the prophet Isaiah, because that's who he's quoting, he's saying, what this is showing is the hardness of people's hearts. I can do miracles. I can raise the dead. I can do everything. But in seeing, they don't see. And in hearing, they don't hear. They don't see my kingdom. They just see all miracles, signs, wonders. In hearing, all they hear is what you can do for me but they never hear the secret of God. There's a secret that God wants to reveal to you about your marriage, about your husband or your wife. There's a secret that God wants to reveal about the job that you do and the place where you live and the neighbours that you live next to and the church that we are and the secrets that he wants to reveal to us. And my prayer is that we never be so caught up in just going signs, wonders, and that we had a great time, but that we actually are the people that go back to him and go, can you please unpack this for me? I just don't want to be a person that sees but without seeing. I don't want to be a person that hears without hearing. I want to hear you. Do you feel that invitation that is drawing? I actually want to reveal the secret to you. It's not on the surface. I want you to dig. I want you to dig into me. I want you to come. I want you to have relationship with me. And that's the prophetic edge of this whole series this month. By the, the fourth week of this month, there's going to be a level of glory that God is going to rest upon your life that is going to change how you see him how you hear him, and you're going to hear him. Not just, it's not just exclusive. It's not just for the pastor. It's for everyone. And he has promised me that he's going to take us from glory to glory. There's a passing away of the glory former, but he's taking us into a glory that's going to be so much newer. I think that's a really good idea, Lisa. I think let's give God a praise and a real clap for that. It's great. But first, all right, here we go. Gee, we're doing good. So let, let, let's just read a couple of verses from verse 14. Let me explain. The farmer sows the word as seed. And what falls on the beaten path represents those who hear the word, but immediately, but immediately, but immediately Satan appears and snatches it from their heart. And that's the main area of concentration today. My goal is not just to go, oh, what's the condition of your heart? Come on, are you the hard heart? Are you the rocky heart? Where there's rock under the soil, there's a bit of soil on the top, then the seed lands and it sprouts, but then it dies. Are you the thorny heart? Are you the, the thistles and the thorns? And when you read about thorns in Scripture, it actually talks about sin and it talks about curses because Jesus took thorns on his head and he became the curse for us all on the tree. So that week we're going to just break everything that has been cursed over your life. We'll get there that week. This week is going, oh, we're the good soil. It's to identify maybe where our heart is. But the Spirit of God, while I was in break, talk, we were just speaking about thinking about changing Psalm 119, how do we do this? And what I felt the Spirit of God says, he says, there's so many hearts that have been trampled and hurt. And one of the messages that were preached, Michael put up a, a picture of a pastor helping someone and all these knives were in their back. And this person was sitting with one knife in theirs. But I also know the flip side of that, where there's one knife in the pastor's back, but leadership and pastors and churches have hurt people and their hearts are hard and wounded. And so it's not a, it doesn't matter which side you're on because it happens either way. Jesus is identifying the condition, but he always comes with his kingdom in mind. And part of his kingdom is to actually heal your heart. 
There are other people, you have been, everything that you've given to God over the years, it feels like what a waste of my life. And I feel the Spirit of God saying, these are just some of the, what's on the, what's made it hard. So the picture, I guess, is when farmers were allotted land by the government, and that they understood this day when Jesus was speaking in that context. So they were allotted land, and it wasn't marked by boundary fences like we know. It was just a lot of land. It could be there'd be a, maybe a tree. And so what they would do is, as they started to clear the rocks out of that, that, that area, they would put it as a ridge around, which sort of fenced off their area. But it wasn't high fences. But what happened is, because this area was given and divvied up, other farmers, on their way to their plot, would walk across it. So, especially on the edges, and on, sorry about that, on the edges. And so that pe- became like a path. Everything that you walk on every day becomes harder, 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 harder. And I guess this, this farmer, if I was to do this, this farmer wasn't sort of really good. And again, very different from what we know farming, where we'll dig the, the furrows, plant the seeds. They didn't do that. What they did was literally got the seed first. Oh, there's a bit of, they would burn the ground. Then they would invite the, the animals to come and eat whatever was left. Then they would hope the animals would poo on the ground. Then they would hope that the sun would bake the ground. And that was then, that season when the rain started to come, was time for them to, to sow. So I've managed to get some seeds. And it was sort of done. Oh, I can hold the mic up to it was sort of done similar to this, where you would have like a little, either a donkey carrying a bag. Um, <laughs> people, you guys are <laughs> reading my mind. See online, if you were here, you would be having seeds, seeds thrown at you. Um, and they would, he would grab it before he plowed the ground, and he would just start, I guess, like a sprinkler, just start to. We have to vacuum this up because there's another church coming in and we have to clean it. So sorry. <laughs> but as you can see, some it's sunflower seed. You can actually eat it. It's edible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great picture of the word of God going into you, becoming a part of you. Awesome. Amen. Proverbs 3, let me just do this one. Proverbs 3, 1 to 3. My son, do not forget my teaching. In about five minutes, Pete, I'll get you to come up. Uh, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. Okay, Jesus speaking here. For they will prolong. Listen to his word of God in your mind. Listen to the fruit it produces. For they will prolong life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. And so that's part of where we see that God's saying, hey, listen, when my word comes into your heart, it produces his kingdom. Because what we read was that's what his kingdom looks like. But I think what God wants to do today is actually wants to heal the ground or the heart that's been trampled. And it could be, you could be like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I was, I'm over that. But in certain areas of our lives, we're thriving and we're getting into it, but in other areas, it's just hard. And it's just been walked on and walked on and walked on. And because I know, like, yeah, God's revealing this stuff to me and I'm still praying and I'm still in the Word and I'm still serving in church, and it feels like that's, that I'm still okay. But the Spirit of God's going, no, no, because I actually want to produce my kingdom in that life. And one of the challenges and the focuses for me was just in the area of being a husband and a father. Where in those areas have I become hard in my heart because whatever has been trampled on my life? Unmet expectation, disappointment. This is nothing about Leah's because Leah's going to come here. You didn't tell me about that. Smack me around the head. My personal, me. I'm, taking, I'm not speaking about someone. I'm speaking about me. Because when something happens to you, then we take that offense. We take that hurt. And then it continues to happen, and then that's when we switch off in our heart. 
So God, you can penetrate my heart in worship. You can penetrate my heart in preparing messages and sermons and pastoring. But in this area, God, I don't know. I'm just struggling with this. I don't know how to give that to you. I don't know how to surrender that. I'm just hard. And then we close off and then we shut off. And that could be happening in a church setting too. I've been going, going, but there's something, someone's hurt me or someone's never said something or something's happened, but it's just closed my heart off. And I, nothing can get through. It's just real hard. All right, I made a list of what makes our heart hard, but I, I think we're going to get into... I think you have a, a great idea of what makes your heart hard. The Bible gives us instruction about how to guard our heart. And this sort of tells me, just hear Scripture into hearing where your heart is, okay? It says, guard your heart, from, from it flows the issues of life. I'm not going to let you hurt me again. I'm not going to enter into that space again. I'm not going to be vulnerable again to you. But it's not about that. The guarding of your heart is putting the word of God in your heart. Because we know in Scripture that people are going to offend you. People are going to say bad things about you. People are going to swear and do and curse you. But when your heart is guarded by the word of God, you don't take offense. The kingdom of God comes. The kingdom of God looks like this, forgiveness. The kingdom of God looks like love. The kingdom of God looks like peace, not anger. Because when my heart's hard and you hurt me, I'm going to punch you out. I want to get you back. I want to hurt you back because you've hurt me. So there's a reaction, not a response. So when the kingdom of God says, hey, bless those who curse you, do good to them that hate you. Let me go to our... Two last scriptures and then we're going to be good. 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 58. Okay, now we're going to shift. All right? Turn your name and go to the shift. Some are going, just the shift would be good to end right now. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. But this is where the healing is going to come, guys. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Don't just hear church. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Another scripture says that your labor is never wasted. So how do I change my heart, Clint? And it's, there's repentance involved, yes. And one of the other things that makes our heart hard is actually sin. Sin makes my, my heart hard to God. Because I've done something, I know it's wrong, but now I don't feel like I want to pray. I don't feel like I want to go to church. And so sin is one of those things that actually keeps my heart from being soft before God. But I want to talk to every hard heart that you've been trampled on and hurt and you've given whether that's in a marriage and it ended up in divorce, whether that's in serving in the church and you got hurt by that, whether that's in your job situation, whether that's by people around you, that wherever you've gone and people have hurt you and have caused your heart to become hard towards them or just towards God, so that even when God's word is sown into your life, it doesn't register, doesn't change anything. So the apostle is saying here, hey guys, I want you to see, when you have given your life for the service of the Lord, and that's why I say don't just limit it to church. It's in every sphere of your life. He's encompassing every, your work, your marriage, your relationship, everything, and, and church. He says when you have done that, understand that nothing is wasted. Turn to your neighbor and go, nothing is wasted. <laughs> All right, I need to get a move on. One Chronicles, let's go there. 1 Chronicles. You okay? Yeah. yeah. 1 Chronicles, chapter 11. Purify my heart. And that's the reason I asked Pete to sing that song. We sang it on Wednesday morning in our prayer time. It's just about, God, I'm coming to you for you to purify it. Come on. And we're actually going to do an act in a moment where I'm going to invite everyone of you uh, at one of the stations that we have at the back there. 
is there is a vase and some plastic cups. And as we read this story right now, it's going to become much more evident to you. So this is the story of David in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. And uh, let me give you a picture. So David uh, is hiding in a cave. There's 300 people around him that have been disgruntled and dissatisfied uh, and, and been there. So David was going to be like, I'm in Saul's house. I'm going to be the next king. Then Saul tries to kill him. He runs for his life. He's hiding in this cave, cave called Adullam, and or Adullam, depends on how you want to pronounce it. And he's hiding in that place, but he's not a really good hider because 300 people that are disgruntled about life find him in a cave and they gather around him. And they're complaining about their needs, but he's just lost his whole career. He's lost his future. He's, God's promise is not going to come true now because he's not going to be king like he was anointed by Samuel. Like, God, what are you doing? I'm in this cave, and now these people are annoying me because they're in distress, and they're broke, and they're looking to me for help, and I don't know if I can help them. And then the Bible says that God challenged him to become the ruler over, the governor. And so out of that, 300 men um, become his mighty warriors. And David's in a space that is just going, oh, you know what? Life has become a bit complicated. And he just wishes, he's surrounded by the, the Philistine, Philistine army, and they're hiding in a cave. These 300 guys, these 300 plus people are there. And he goes, you know what? I just wish... I wish I could drink from the well in Bethlehem. I wish I just could drink from that. He wasn't literally meaning it. He was just wishing, I wish life would be simpler. You know how sometimes when you're in that space and you just wish, I wish, you know, back in the day it was just much easier. I just wish I could go back there when I wasn't having these, you know, relationship problems. It was so much better when I wasn't in a relationship. Or oh, it was so much better when I wasn't at work, but, you know, I had all this time to myself. But now I'm at work, I've got to work long days, I'm just tired. You know, sometimes when God answers, oh, I want to be in ministry and I want to be, you know, I want to preach and then all this stuff happens and you just go, I just wish for a simpler time where I could just be back there. Three of these guys go, David wants to drink from Bethlehem. He runs. They, they go through enemy lines. They put their lives at risk to grab him a drink and then they bring it back to him. Um, pretend this is the drink. I'm paraphrasing this. We won't have time to read it. And they give it to David. And David takes it from them and they explain the story. And David's going, oh my gosh, guys. Guys, sorry, I didn't mean that. I just meant I wish life was a bit simpler back in the day when I was in the palace and I had great food and, and great lodgings and stuff. That's all I was meaning, guys. Sorry, it was just a metaphor. It was just an example. And guess what David does? He takes it and he pours it out. Are you serious? I can you imagine those three guys? Are you serious? I nearly died. I, the sword went past my head, whatever that was. I've given all my life. I've sacrificed my freedom and my life to, for you. My family could have had no dad or my mom could have had no son, but I did that for you. And I give it to you and you pour it out? At least drink it. At least take a swig and go, guys, oh, awesome. Best water I've ever tasted. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Let's honor these three. Amazing. And I think where God's wanting to heal people is that you're there. I gave my life, gave my family, gave my finances, gave everything in my life, served youth group, served in a ministry, and all I got was it poured out. And David explains to them, hey guys, me pouring it out is not wasting it. What I'm taking from what you've given is that I'm actually pouring it out as worship before God. I'm not worthy to drink this. I'm not worthy for this to be... Everyone's worried about the carpet, it's okay. This is as worship to God. And what I see from this is that David in that moment took what could have been hardness of heart and offense and poured it out 
as worship before God. So where you are right now, thanks team, you guys can come. In a moment, I'm going to invite people that are here online, if you are watching. And I'm going to invite as all of you, but then I don't want people to feel like, oh, obligated. David took their sacrifice because of duty. David, when we were in a bad place, you helped us out. So we gave our life. And he poured it out. But the thing was that it became sacred in that moment. I want you just to take a moment. Just bow your heads, bow your heads, eyes closed. Because even Paul in Philippians says this. My life is poured out like a drink offering. So in that space where your heart has been trampled and hurt by people, by a spouse, by friends, by kids, by parents, by church leaders, by church. This is not a moment to rehearse it. This is a moment to present it to God as an offering of worship. It's going to take that and make that sacred. Remember that everything you've done for God is never wasted. <laughs> it's never wasted. So the invitation for all of us in this moment as the band's going to play is to go to one of the stations at the back, pour a little bit of that in a plastic cup and then make your way to the front and that plastic cup with that water represents the things that you've gone through in your history and the challenges that you faced that felt like it trampled you and made you hard if it's sin then you just need to God I, I ask you to forgive me for the sin sleeping with that person God forgive me that sin. She wasn't mine to take. Or if it's something else, God, forgive me for that sin. As you're pouring that water in that cup, God, this is the sacrifice of my life that I bring to you. It's my sin and my sacrifice. And then as you make your way to the front, but God, I'm pouring it out. The hardness of my heart I'm pouring it out. The thing that caused my heart to go hard, I'm pouring it out as an offering to you. My life is poured out. Everything that I do is not wasted in you. This is my worship to you. And in that moment, something's going to break over your life. There's a prophetic deliverance edge on this word that I know God is going to heal. Years, years of hardness. That's why you can come to church and leave church and not be changed. You could miss out on church and feel like I've never, I haven't missed anything. It's not because the preaching's not good. It's because your heart's hard. And just right now, I just feel the Holy Spirit. Just, he's going to speak to you. Holy Spirit, would you come? And would you speak? We're going to just ask the refiner's fire to come. It need be our heart's desire. It's going to produce the kingdom of God in you. Why don't you stand to your feet? I came prepared. So take a moment as the worship happens. Make your way to the back, to the stations. Grab a glass. Don't fill it, fill it. Put some water in it. But that's your offering right now. Go for it. Thanks, man.
God, I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you every person that's hurt me. I'm giving you every word said against my life. God, every offense, every rejection, every unanswered prayer, every disappointment. God, I'm giving it to you. Every unmet expectation. Every way people have seen me. seed on the ground without plowing it in. I mean, without plowing it before. And then we just come with a stick and just dig it in. Right now, God is digging in His Word and His Kingdom into your life. And in this moment, it's a moment of contemplation and of worship. But for some of you, this has been a time where the enemy has taken a stronghold. And we're shifting from it just being really mellow and really nice to be something that we're going to confront because it has taken and robbed from you, stolen from you. And I hear the word of the Lord say to you, I will restore what the worm has eaten and the years that the locusts have destroyed. 
God is about to restore into your heart, to your life, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Just in this moment, in this time, I don't know if we can get that sense and that feel. We can't right now. And just pick up that emphasis. Spirit of God, listen to the Word of God. Let me declare this over you. So righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. And break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until He comes and showers His righteousness on you. Father, right now we declare, come on, I want you to take that moment in just time. You're not feeling in a place, your posture's not look like I'm in a, a really healing moment. It is that, but there's a, a moment right now of declaration and that God is about to heal your life right now. He's coming in in this way. He's saying to you, so to yourselves, Father, I declare and I decree over every heart and over every mind that has been trampled throughout their history, throughout their journey, and felt like, Lord God, it was all a waste. It felt like it was not good enough anymore. But I pray and declare that nothing, nothing is ever wasted in you. And I declare over every heart, over every life, over every mind, that, Lord, that they would sow righteousness, and they would sow to themselves righteousness, that they would break up that ground, that they would pour out their life as an offering, you would give them a heart of flesh, we pray. We declare like with Ezekiel that, Lord God, you're going to give them a heart of flesh, susceptible to the Word of God, open to the Kingdom of God, being established in their life, healing and restoration and fruitfulness on every front, that there would be a life, Lord God, that's sown to holiness, that's sown to the righteousness of God, and that there would come freedom in Jesus' precious name. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Come on, I want to declare fruitfulness right now over you. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. And shout for joy. I declare, Lord, a shout. I declare, Lord God, over your people joy. I declare, Lord God, take away the heaviness, the mourning, the sadness, the loneliness the depression, everything that's hard in their heart and in their spirit. I break, Father God, right now, the lie of the enemy, Lord, the stronghold of the enemy, the assignment of the enemy that has come to, Lord, flatten your church, cause us to be hard to your kingdom. Father, we break that in the name of Jesus. We declare, we declare, as Jesus did, that God is to be worshipped and only God alone. Enemy, when you tempted him, and God, I just feel the Spirit of God saying, I'm breaking the temptation of you to stay in offense, for you to stay in unforgiveness. He's, de he's dealt with it already, but he's just breaking the power to want to go back to that road. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you for it right now. Thank you, Father, right now. Breaking. Come on, you don't need to be at that place. Your life is poured out as offering, as worship to Jesus. There's freedom right now. There's freedom right now. Come on, there's a wilderness. There might be a wilderness, but there's a blossom coming. Come on, there's a blossom in your marriage right now. There's a blossom in your marriage. There's a blossom in your relationship. Every relationship. Every relationship. Just give me a base there. Yeah, go. Boom. Come on, let's declare this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. is breaking the power of the enemy to for you to believe that God has no power that God can't heal come on he's breaking that history has said it to you experience has told you but the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is healing his power the kingdom of God is forgiveness
Lord, break that spirit and that stronghold that has held your son and your daughter in the name of Jesus right now. Church, and begin to pray. There's some actual spiritual strongholds that God is wanting to shift and to break. Father, I pray right now for your freedom. Come on, let's just begin to pray. Come on, it's breaking. Yeah, there's an authority. That's just, that's the kingdom of God. That's when the word of God comes. I command you right now. I command you, loose your grip. I command you. I command you free right now. I command you to get out, to get off in the name of Jesus, of, your, of the children of God. The bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I command you right now. Guys, it's not just about this building, but it's also outside of this space. There's family members attached to you that the enemy's just taking for. Just, it's just ruling and reigning on them. <clears throat> and they can't get free. Come on, I want you to begin to declare. The Bible says, I will pour water on them who's thirsty and streams on the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit and on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And they will spring up like grass in the meadow, like a poplar tree with by flowing streams. Father, we pray right now, freedom, 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 freedom over every spirit, over everything that has held your people bound in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I exalt thee. Thank you, God. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your hope. Father, we want to bless you for today. We want to thank you for gathering, for being present, oh God. We thank you for your presence. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless church.